My research and writings as a social historian are completely influenced by my family's working class background in Birmingham. Mum's family were factory workers in Aston. Dad and my granddad, Chin, were both illegal bookmakers in Sparkbrook. That is until 1961, when cash betting away from the race course was legalised. At first, and for many years, Grandad took bets on the street. But by the late 1950s, Dad had opened up with his brother an illegal betting shop. In 1958, he was arrested and fined £50. So too was my uncle. And paradoxically, three years later, cash betting was legalised and that illegal betting shop became a legal betting shop. Growing up, I'd heard about the Peaky Blinders, but like most Brummies of my age and background, I didn't know much about them. I'd also been told of my great-grandfather, Edward Derrick, who was a vicious, vile man who beat up my great-grandmother. I later found out that he was a real Peaky Blinder. Another story I was told was about the Birmingham race gang who terrorised bookmakers on the race courses. And over the years, all these stories came together in my research on the Peaky Blinders and the race gangs. Back in the mid-1980s, I was writing a book about bookmaking and I interviewed a number of old bookmakers from London who told me about the Birmingham gang and that it was led by Billy Kimber. Now, in the series, The Peaky Blinders, Billy Kimber is depicted as a Londoner. He wasn't, he was a Brummy from Summer Lane. At that time, I also interviewed the younger brother of the real Alfie Solomon, another key figure in the drama, The Peaky Blinders. And another man I interviewed was the son of the right-hand man of Darby Sabini, the Italian gangster of the drama. The Peaky Blinders were the hooligans of Birmingham in the 1890s and the turn of the 20th century. And by the time of the First World War, Kimber brought these small gangs from Birmingham into a slightly better organised entity known as the Birmingham Gang. In little groups of six and seven, they travelled the Midlands and the North, pickpocketing racegoers and blackmailing bookmakers. By 1920, the Birmingham Gang ruled the racecourse rackets in the Midlands and the North with a rod of iron. And that year, led by Billy Kimber and in alliance with some gangsters from London, they took over the blackmailing of bookmakers and pickpocketing on the racecourses of the South. That was the catalyst for the first major gang war in England between gangs from different cities because the supremacy of the Birmingham Gang was challenged by the Sabini Gang. Anglo-Italians led by Darby Sabini from Clerkenwell in North London, allied with Anglo-Jewish gangsters including Alfie Solomon and men of solely English heritage, eventually defeated the Birmingham Gang in 1921. Over the next few years, the Birmingham Gang continued to extort money from bookmakers in their own domain, as did the Sabinis down south. But from 1925, the Flying Squad of the Metropolitan Police, the Birmingham Police and the racecourse authorities started to push the gangs away from the racecourses. In London, the Sabini Gang found new blackmailing opportunities. In its heartland of Clerkenwell and King's Cross and the neighbouring districts, they extorted money from street traders, shopkeepers, publicans, restaurateurs, cafe owners. But they also moved into Soho. The Sabini Gang became the prototype for later organised crime gangs in the capital. By the late 1930s, it had split up into two allied forces, the Italian Gang and the King's Cross mob. During the Second World War, because Britain was fighting Italy, the Italian gang had to keep a low profile. And it was the King's Cross gang, led by a man called Harry White, who ruled the roost in Soho. But in 1947, his power was violently broken by an up-and-coming gangster from the Jewish East End, Jack Spot. Spot saw himself as the inheritor of the gangster mantle of Darby Sabini. He became known as the King of Soho. 
and he also was the king of the point to points. These were meetings where the racecourse authorities did not have control and gangsters like Spot could still extort money from bookmakers. From the early 1950s, Spot shared the title of the governor of London's underworld with a man called Billy Hill from Camden Town. And at first they had a shaky but amicable relationship, but it started to break down. The Italian gang had now made a comeback and they resented Spot for taking over the point to points. And they came together with Billy Hill. They saw Spot as a braggart who needed to be overthrown. And in the mid 1950s, they succeeded. There was a terrible knife fight between one of the Italian gang, Albert Dines and Jack Spot, which captured the attention of the newspapers. Jack Spot faded into obscurity. Billy Hill went into gangster retirement. The older members of the Italian gang also disappeared from the scene. But Albert Dimes continued to be regarded as a force in Soho, albeit in the background, and was named by some as the Mafia's representative in London. He was the last man to be connected to the Italian gang, which emerged from the Sabini gang, and thus, with the beginnings of organised criminal gangs in London. That was the legacy of the Peaky Finders and also their aftermath. If you want to find out more, then have a look at my book, Peaky Blinders, The Aftermath.